to our Facebook broadcast. Today is a very uh, important broadcast for all of you who are studying. It is time. Hi, come on in, come on in. Um, today is a very important broadcast because I'm going to be talking specifically to those students who have experienced failure in NCLEX, the form that they receive called the um, candidate report form, what it means, uh, how the exam is grading you. Because you know what I noticed? That the more I study the NCLEX exam, the more I study the idea behind it, the research behind it, I realized that what makes it so difficult is that sometimes we just don't understand what's going on. We don't understand what's happening. We don't understand how the items are formulated, why they're graded in, in such ways. And so when we understand the, the test, then it reduces some of the anxiety. And I know that somebody can uh, agree with that statement. So today we're gonna talk about the form. We're also gonna talk about, more importantly, how you can be successful moving forward because the idea is that you get your license and nothing stands in your way. Not NCLEX, not anything, so let's do it. All right, so this is the agenda for today. Hi, everybody that's coming in here. Everybody's saying hello to each other. Um, and I know that you guys have your own experience when it comes to failing in NCLEX, so you can feel free to share while I'm teaching on this particular subject, okay? So here is the basic of the report form. Everyone who has failed gets a sheet that looks like this, right? So you'll get a sheet and it will look like this. It is a two page sheet. And when you take your NCLEX exam, it's actually graded twice. It's graded there at the testing center. And then it is electronically transmitted to whatever board of nursing that you have uh, sent your information to. And then they're supposed to grade it as well. So your NCLEX is supposed to be graded twice. Now you need to have answered the minimum for the grade. So for example, for your NCLEX RN, the minimum questions that you get is 75, right? So in order for you to get one of these forms, you have to have uh, answered at least 75 or 85 questions if you're taking PN. Now, I have had an experience with a student who they were so anxious, they were so afraid of the exam, I don't know if they didn't sleep the night before or whatever happened, but they told me that when they sat down to the test, they answered a few questions, maybe like 10 or less, and then they put their head down. And I, and then when they woke up, their exam was over. They had slept through the entire exam. So if that happened to you, or if you don't get a chance because you run out of time and you only answer 50 questions or, I don't know, it, you will not get a report. Uh, what you will get is a piece of paper that says, you only answered 10 questions and you need to have answered 75 in order to generate a report, okay? So you have to answer the minimal in order to get this candidate report form. Now, who, who you are and who you are is essentially just a name and a number, okay? Um, I have here an example of what the form looks like. At the top of the form, essentially, it just says your name, whoever you are, and it basically gives you a number, your birthday, social security um, number may or may not be written out there, and your nursing school. So people ask me all the time, is the test different for international nurses? You know, is NCLEX out to get me? No, they're not out to get, get you. Essentially, all you are are, are naming a number to this computer program. So and a natural extension of that, a natural extension, hi, Sandra, come on in. A natural extension of the NCLEX exam, considering you to be a name or a number, means that the NCLEX exam it does not care if your nursing school went over the test plan with you and prepared you for it. It does not click care um, if you have studied fully. It doesn't care if English is your second language or your first language. It has no, um, it has no stated prejudices, okay? So when you sit down to take the test, you're there to demonstrate fully what you know uh, without bias. So it's very important 
that when you do go for this exam, you've done everything that you need to do to prepare. Don't think that you're going to have any excuse during the exam. You're not going to be able to ask anybody questions. If you don't understand what words mean, uh, it will not be there to assist you in any way. It's strictly there to grade you. So again, this is what the first part of that candidate re re report form will look like. All right. So also on the first page, also on the first page, the report form kind of explains how the test operates. So on the test, it will say a minimum of 75 questions was answered, all right? So if you failed and it says you got 75 questions, it will tell you if you failed, if you failed in 100 questions or 200 questions. But here's the thing, only the students who are close to the passing rate continue to get more questions, okay? So if you fail, if you email me and say, hey, I failed in 75 questions, then I know that you were very far from the passing standard when you test it. Because if you were close to it, it would give you more and more questions. So look at it as, I just need to study more content, okay? But if you, Took in, take an NCLEX and you got 240 questions, know that you were very close to that passing standard. So the test lets you go on, continue, continue, continue to demonstrate that you have some competency in the test plan areas. So when you're taking the test and you keep getting questions, this is not the time for you to freak out. This is not the time for you to get anxious and say, oh my goodness, I'm failing, I'm not doing good. That is the absolute mistruth. It, it, it doesn't even correlate with how the test works. If you were not doing good, then the test would just shut you off. But because you're getting more and more questions, you have to motivate yourself. You have to have positive self-talk and say, hey, I must be doing good. I must be doing something right because the test is letting me continue to proceed, okay? So let's change our thinking when we take the exam, all right? So good afternoon, everybody. Okay, so the form will also, it'll tell you um, how the test works. It'll tell you also the kind of people who pass the test. So this is a really, uh, this is a very poignant statement here. Only the people who are above the passing standard will clear this test, okay? And that just says something to me right there because it's not about reaching the passing standard. You have to be consistently above it. You have to be consistently above that passing standard. So I wanted to kind of explain to you guys um, what the passing standard is and this comes straight from the NCBSN website to tell you about the passing standard for the RN and the PN exam, okay? The RN and PN exam. So the NC, um, NCSBN voted on December 9th, 2015 to uphold the current passing standard for NCLEX RN. The passing standard will remain at the current level of 0, 0.00 logits. That was instituted April 1st, 2013. This passing standard will remain in effect through March 31st, 2019. So currently the RN passing standard is 0, 0.00 logits, whereas uh, the NCLEX PN is a little different. It says on December 1st, 2016, NCSBN voted to uphold the current passing standard for the NCLEX PN. The passing standard will remain at the current level of zero, no, I'm sorry, negative 0 0.21 logits. This was instituted April 1st, 2014. This passing standard will remain in effect through March 31st, 2020. 2020. So you can see here that um, the NCLEX, uh, it presents, it presents a passing standard in the form of logits, okay? So we don't normally use logits anywhere in nursing. 
but it is a statistical measurement that shows the probability of a candidate's um, ability to pass the entire exam. So um, I found a chart that kind of explains a little bit more as I was um, trying to understand logics and statistics to present to you guys. I found a really cool chart that I think will help uh, make more sense of it. So let me show you guys here. Okay, so the RN passing standard right now is 0, 0.00 logits. Now, if you look at this chart, what you will see uh, on the furthest column to the left is the logits, okay? You'll see the logits. And then you will see right next to it, the probability of success, okay? Or how successful the candidate will be um, in terms of clearing the test or answering correctly. So right now for NCLEX RN, the logic is 0, 0.00. The probability of success that is associated with that logic is 50%, okay, 50%. So right there, um, I let students know that that is only half, <laughs> that is only half the exam or half the questions. And so I know that you guys can take this information and put it to good use. You're only expected to get 50%. That is the passing standard for the NCLEX RN, all right? So this should really be mind blowing to you guys right now that you don't have to be perfect at all. You, you don't have to get every question right you have to get to this minimum of 50% for the NCLEX RN. Now, when I was studying this, and I knew this before, but um, studying it for this broadcast today brought it back to my mind. Uh, so we looked at the RN exam and it's 50%. So I said, well, let me check out my PN exam. Now my PN students, they have a negative logics that uh, correlate to their uh, probability of success. So the PN, if we look at them, and we look at where zero point, negative 0 0.21 is, that actually um, is below the RN. So the probability of success that is expected on the NCLEX PN is only, let me look again, is only a 45%. So the NCLEX PN to me is, more difficult, more challenging to clear. And I know a lot of RNs, they think, well, if I can't pass the RN exam, I'm gonna try to try to take that PN exam and pass it. And what ends up happening is they don't pass that either because the probability of success is is lower. Okay. It's more it's it's more challenging. And um, I just thought that that was really interesting as I was studying this test. See, you know what? I don't just get up here and just just be talking to you guys just to say things. I really am um, I'm really trying to make sure that I'm informed on in what I'm saying to you guys and that I'm really, really involved. Like NCLEX is my life right now. Everything I do uh, is is revol revolving around this test so that we can give you guys the most helpful information here at Read My Review. Because the more we know, the better off we will be with this exam. And there's so much mystery. Don't you hate the mystery? Like, why didn't we know this before? Like, why didn't we learn this in school? Why, why aren't we learning this? Um, but anyways, so this is the measurement by which you are, you are, um, you know, you are expected to know. So when you get your candidate report form, I want you guys to really be able to see it, be able to see it for what it is, okay? Um, so on the second page of the candidate report form, you have, uh, and, and you can't see this, but you will have those magic words that everybody looks for when it breaks down the test plan, uh, it is below passing, near passing, or above passing. And these words, I, I don't know what to say about it because they literally, they literally don't tell you anything, okay? So no matter who you are, no matter how many times you take the test, 
when you turn over to the second page of your candidate report form, bam, it will be it will be it will be nothing like it will just be the test plan. It will be the test plan that you already knew and it will tell you, OK, you were below the passing standard, but you don't know um, how much below you were and you don't know um, which areas you were below in. Right. And you don't know uh, how you can really focus on the topics because it's so vague. All right. So here's the thing about it. And the, the NCLEX board, they give you a way to study. OK, so their studying method is their studying method is look at the report form in every area that says below passing. That is the area that you focus on. OK, so you focus on that area. And then if you have any near passings, you focus on that area subsequently and then if you have any above passings you focus on that area last okay so this is their way to get you to study i don't like this way i don't think it's helpful to you at all because what it doesn't say on that website it doesn't say this things okay so it doesn't say that the test remembers your last exam so you will not get the same test twice okay so that means that if you are uh focusing only on okay let's say you got basic care and comfort below the passing standard so you focus only on basic care and comfort and that is like your main main that's your main focus when you take the test again it's very likely that you can get zero basic care and comfort questions because the exam is targeting your weakness, right? It's targeting your weakness. So it may say, hey, this person has studied a whole bunch of basic care and comfort. Let me ask them stuff about reduction of risk potential. And based off of your you know, candidate report form, you were above that. You were above that last time, so you don't even look at it. <laughs> but now it's like, oh my goodness, I didn't study this at all. So I tell my students, when you get this report form, it's good to look at, but literally you just need to throw it away, okay? Because on your next exam, it will be a totally different exam. So if you got near passings on all of these categories, no, you need to start over from the beginning, all right? Because the bottom line, you were not above passing in any area. So that is an issue for the exam because we know the people who passed this test are the ones who are above the passing rate consistently. So for, uh, you know, for that NCLEX RN exam, 50%, you know, you have a 50% probability of success. And so it's really tough. Uh, it's, it's really tough to just go by this report form. It's not going to give you the, the best information moving forward. Now, if you guys have, um, if you guys have never seen the test plan, which I do, I do encourage you all, you you guys can look this up right now. You all can get your current NCLEX test plan. You can Google it, NCLEX RN test plan, NCLEX PN test plan. You don't have to wait to get this form in order to see the test plan. It's, it's available, it's there for you to go through it and look and see, hey, do I know this information? Um, this is what I, you know, I built Remar Review off of some of these things, well, most of these things, but um, I, I took the majority of the large content and put in the lecture uh, information in my review. And then the other content I put in the quick facts, the activity book and the homework book so that they all work together. And that's why I don't sell any of the books separately because literally they all work together to help you pass. OK, so. Um, Here's a, I, I see your question here. Somebody's asking about this report form and they say, what if you have um, some areas that are above passing, some areas that are near passing, do you pass the exam? And the answer is going to be no, you do not pass the exam. You have to have uh, above passing on all of the content um, areas. Like you have to have that probability of passing in every content area, okay? So near passing, below passing, they don't cut it, okay? They don't cut it. All right, 
So we're talking about here our candidate report forms, how we understand them, what they mean, and how and how um, we can move forward. Now, I'm really excited because I know that the NCLEX RN is changing next year. And I have been able to find some of the changes that are happening. So Monday, if you guys like the live reviews that I do and you typically watch them, on Monday I will be doing an early release of the 2019 RN changes, the ones that I've been able to find so far. And I think that it will be very helpful for future nurses. I'm encouraging everybody that's an RN right now, please take the test before 2019. The changes will not come. The changes will not come uh, before March 2019. So that's plenty of time. There is no reason why you cannot have taken and passed this test. I do. Um, I do suspect to see some some pretty substantial changes, okay? Pretty substantial changes. So I'm encouraging you guys now, do what you need to do to pass the exam. All right, so somebody just asked me, what are the percentages next to the, um, the test plan areas? So for example, management of care, it says 17 to 23% of the test, all right? And this is not your test specifically, um, it's, it's general. Everybody's second page of their CPR will look exactly the same. In general, if you're an uh, RN, the management of care is 17 to 23% of your exam, okay? 17 to 23% of the exam. Safety and confection, infection control, um, this is the percentage, okay? So it doesn't tell you anything specifically about your exam, all right? And let me just tell you guys, this test, this test has been developed to be difficult. It is not an easy exam, all right? So in the way that this test is presented to you guys, where you can do, if you fail it, you can take it again in 45 days, that is eight times a year, okay? That's eight times a year. The people who wrote this test know that many people will have a hard time passing it, all right? So think about it. If you can take it eight times a year, think about how much money this institution is making based off of people failing it, all right? So you have to consider um, the reason for the mystery, the reason for um, it to be challenging of course it is to protect the public you don't want new nurses not understanding the difference between insulins not understanding the difference between um, narcotics these are things we have to know but again think about how much money is being paid out uh, when you can't pass this exam you know there are some people who take it every 45 days because they don't know what else to do in terms of their studying and they're they're just looking at these forms and um it's not giving them much information and so it's very it's very uh hard to pass now what what we do see now is that some states are limiting the amount of times that you can take this test so right now for uh wait, from florida right florida is a big one where you can only test can only test three times and then they make you do a refresher course you know some states will make you go back to nursing school all right but the problem with that is there is no correlation between most nursing programs and this test plan okay which means that your teachers when they develop their pharmacology curriculum they're not looking at NCLEX they're just they're just doing the pharmacology that they feel is important. They they're doing the pharmacology that may or may not show up on your test. So there's many flaws um, in getting the the correlation between the test plan and nursing schools on one page. But I think that is also why there is an industry of NCLEX reviews because it is it is more than well known that after nursing school you need additional preparation to pass this test. Okay, to pass this test. So 
Um, it is very expensive if you don't remediate. And so that's another reason why I encourage students to take an NCLEX review because it will help you to identify your weak areas. And I know we think we know the content. I know we think we have it down. But if you failed NCLEX in uh, 90 questions or 80 questions, there's some content that you need to go back over. OK, there's some content that you need to go back over. So what it, what it, what can be done? OK, what can be done? This is this is my suggestions. All right. Number one, I want you to take this report with two hands. I want you to ball it up like this in this fashion. OK, if you just ball it, you mold it. All right. And I want you to look for the nearest trash can and throw it away because there is a new test coming for you um, and you need to uh, you need to be prepared for it. OK. And here I recommend Remar review. OK. Um, and that is why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm trying to inform you guys that there is a better way. There is a better way. It's called Remar Review. OK. And I know that you guys can do it. Um, there are a lot of steps that help you overcome the anxiety and trauma that goes along with not passing NCLEX. It is a traumatizing event because you you tell everybody that you're going to take this test. People know you graduated nursing school. So they're waiting. They're wanted, they want to know, like, OK, when are, when are you working? What are you doing? And it's very traumatizing. So th these are the things that you can do. OK, know that you have to start over from the beginning. You're going to get a brand new test. We have this thing. I don't know. Some of you guys have seen it, but it's our NCLEX grief form. It's a grief form. OK. And what my goal was for this form is free. You can just email me at support at Remar review and I'll get it to you. OK. Um, it's basically a, a two page form and it kind of allows you to talk about your NCLEX, um, your NCLEX failure. Like, let me see, for example, some questions are um, if you could go back and change the way you studied, how would you change the way you study? OK, um, I believe I failed because I needed more time to study. I had external pressures. I was overly anxious. So it kind of asks you like how you felt about your studying process. Like the goal was uh, the goal is here to allow you to write down. And this is for your own personal um, this is for your own personal edification. Uh, but how do you feel moving forward? What are some adversities you need to overcome when studying the next time? So I think this form is really helpful to help you kind of dissect your barriers, because I know uh, for people who have failed in CLEX, you had some challenges to overcome and you had some things that you had to um, some obstacles that may have been in your way. That may have been your way. So you right now, Marsha, you got you, you know, like what are some things that got into your way when you were studying? Uh, so moving forward, you can address those issues right up front. OK, right up front. And again, this you can just get this if you email email me at support at remarreview.com for the grief form. Uh, but these are things that definitely, definitely help you for the next time around, because you want to make sure that when you sit for the test, no matter where you are, no matter where you are, if you're in Florida, if you're in Texas, if you're in Puerto Rico, wherever, uh, you're going to get the you're going to get the same same questions. They all come from a master item set. So it's a big pool, um, a, a thousand questions, I believe it is. It may be more than that, but you're going to get you're going to get that test. OK, but the test will remember the last questions that you had. So don't try to go home and study those questions and those topics and think, OK, I studied those topics I saw on the test. I'm good for the next test. No, you have to start all over again, whatever that looks like to you. OK, so I know that this will give you guys new insight onto how you should study. Also, what you should do with that candidate report form. I um, I'm going to have Mark. OK, Mark's going to come in and he's going to talk about um, 
some more very important things I think that you guys will really enjoy. But but I'm going to stay right here. But you guys have to say this with me. You have to repeat after me. Here it is. <laughs> you guys know this, right? I want to read it, but I know you guys know this. Here we go. I can. I will. I must. I can. I will. I must. I'm talking about passing NCLEX. I'm, I'm talking about passing NCLEX. <laughs> Norma said, already threw my results in the trash. I feel free. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I can, I will, I must. I have somebody listening from Tibet. That's Tibet. amazing. Philippines, Philippines, South Carolina, Lisa, mm -hmm. North Carolina. Nigeria was there too. Nigeria? Yeah. Wow. All the places I want to go. <laughs> All the places I want to go. There. Yeah, we're right there. Okay. All right. Okay. That was um, awesome. Yeah, I think I think it was very very insightful. Do you want to sit? Yeah. I okay. Sit. Okay. And so what we'll do? We'll switch. Switch. Okay. All right. We'll lower it down. You're gonna stay here with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I showed him the grief form. Okay. I thought um I think it'll be very helpful. I don't talk about the grief grief form a lot, but for those of you guys who are Edie from Texas, uh, for those of you guys who think you may need the grief form, consider it. Okay, because it's it's really good. What we'll do is um. After after the uh, post or after the live is over, yeah, we'll put a link for the grief form. So whoever needs it, you can download the uh, oh, the grief form. That would be cool. Right um, on the video, right? Yeah, right on the video okay. after uh, after the broadcast. Just give us like ten minutes, and we'll have it up for you, so you can download that. Cool. All right. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about um, uh, dealing with failure and kind of repositioning yourself for success oh. uh, on the website at the bottom of the website, uh, remarreview.com. We have a section, it's, uh, it's a link, it says the top five reasons uh, that students have failed NCLEX. Top five reasons that students have failed NCLEX and what to do next time. Uh, Regina talked about some of those things. I just wanna go over them uh, really briefly uh, and then we're gonna pray. Uh, then I have a, um, a brief word for you. So top five reasons why students fail NCLEX and what to do next time. Okay, uh, so number one is you only did questions, right? You focused oh, on yeah. questions, you did like 75 questions a day, you did 100 questions a day, um, and thought that by doing the questions that you would learn all of the material, oh. all right? So that's that's reason number one, you only focused on the questions, okay? Yes, yes. Right. you wanna hop I, in I here, I go ahead. Because you know what, I was thinking about this this morning and thinking about how a lot of students, they have question, they have question banks or they have question sources and they really, really commit to those question banks and they really, really give it their all. And then when they take the test, they're like, um, they're feeling very deflated and they're let down because they're searching for the rationales that they thought they read mm -hmm. and it's just um, it's just not the right way to start your studying off okay so please please for any of you guys who are just doing on questions um, make sure you study the content first I didn't mean to no absolutely we're gonna do this together okay in fact I remember uh, somebody emailed you and said that they were tired of just trying to memorize the rationale oh right? yeah they were tired of trying to memorize yeah. the rationale and that really stuck with me um, because if you're not you know if you're not actually learning the material but you're just kind of seeing uh, a limited yeah. segment of what they have for you, yeah. you know, you're kind of left in the dark. So doing questions only, don't do that. Okay. Uh, the next one is study too long. All right, it says you assume that studying all day would allow you to cover more ground uh, uh -huh. and you became fatigued and tired and honestly didn't really retain uh, the things that you covered. Uh, so two, and a, two to three hours is more than enough time to study. Uh, if you're doing four hours, five hours, six hours at the library, all of that information is not sinking in. No. So we want you just to hit it study what you need to and let it marinate and just think about the things that you've covered. Yeah, yeah, and I, I know most of my students, they say that they break it up, like they'll do an hour in the morning and then they'll do like uh, maybe an hour and a half in the afternoon or before bed. So three hours is really, should it really should be your max. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, the next thing that we have is procrastination. Now me, I, I get it, I'm a procrastinator. Um, and, and there's <laughs> and there's reasons why we procrastinate, um, but this we actually have to change the way that we think and change the way that we do things, yeah. right? So you got busy after graduation, uh, and then you went out and you bought several different NCLEX resources. Maybe you didn't do the right homework, um, and then books, and now you're feeling overwhelmed. Uh, and it doesn't matter how good the material is if you don't give yourself enough time to uh, succeed. Uh, it'll be very difficult to pass. All right, so make sure that you're not procrastinating. Do your research, uh, get the right material and not just an abundance of material. 
all right? Because too much of anything uh, can be bad for you, all right? Yeah. Uh, the next one is that you underestimated NCLEX. You underestimated NCLEX, and this is geared more time, more so for the first time test taker. Uh, and it's essentially that you assume that because you got A's in nursing school, uh, on the chapter uh, exams, uh, that you would be able to do the same with NCLEX. You might have been at the top mm -hmm. of your class, but that has absolutely nothing to do with NCLEX. No. All right. Uh, and so when you went and took the test, um, you were surprised by the level of difficulty uh, because you underestimated NCLEX. Yeah. Um, so what I'm glad what I'm glad about is that you're surrounding yourself with a community of support uh, as a Remar nurse to make sure. Um, that you're able to get the right resources, the right help, and then kind of mentally position yourself uh, for success. Yeah. The next one, and this is really common right here. This is kind of like we are creatures. People are creatures of habit. All right. We're creatures of habit. In other words, if we're familiar with something, we have the tendency to go back to it again and again and again mm -hmm. just because we're comfortable with it or we're familiar with it, even if it didn't work. Yeah. So number five is using failed material. All right. So if something didn't work for you, you have to change it. OK. And even if uh, so either change the material or change the method or approach to that material. Yeah. OK. Uh, don't keep doing the exact same thing because you're going to get the same results. Uh, you have to be able to pause and reevaluate your study methods uh, and get what works best for you. Absolutely. And everybody is a different learner. Like, you know how you like to learn. So if you're a reader, if you're a reader, don't get flashcards. Don't be out there buying flashcards when you know you like to read paragraphs of information. Again, if you're, uh, if you're a visual learner, you cannot uh, get books. You cannot get books because you like to see and you like to hear mm -hmm. at the same time. Usually most visual learners uh, typically are audit um, help me. Auditory. <laughs> auditory learners. Yeah. yeah. So that you have the combination of both. So you have to know how you like to study. Uh, if you like to have the physical books in your hand, uh, you will get very little progress in an online program, all right? So there is there are many different NCLEX resources, and I think sometimes that can be the downfall yeah. because you say, oh, I need to get this, or so-and-so is using this and pass, but that might not necessarily work for you. So make sure you're doing what's best for you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, In fact, uh, Wendy Anna, she actually asked the question, says, how many resources is too much? Uh, and what I'll say to that is that you want to make sure that whatever resources that you use, it falls into a system. Yes. In other words, the resources that you use should be designed to work together yes. and give you the That's big so picture of NCLEX. Yeah. All right. You don't want to start to piece together your NCLEX resources. Um, now, there are some supportive tools such as question banks. Um, you can use that at the end of a comprehensive review. Yeah. Uh, Quick Facts is considered a supportive tool. You can add that to another NCLEX review. Um, but don't try to do two comprehensive NCLEX reviews at the same time uh, or even back to back. Uh, but the main thing that you have to do is pick the right resource that works for you and make that your primary source of study. Yes. Uh, and that's going to uh, really cut down on confusion yeah. uh, and make sure that you have a systematic approach for success. And cut down for confusion for me <laughs> because I get people all the time asking me to explain questions from another resource and it's just like oh my goodness um, because there is so much conflicting information it can be very very confusing to somebody who's studying three or four different books on the same topic so you guys have to be nice to yourself right um, you have to be nice to yourself absolutely and I think um, one of the reasons why they add a lot or why you might add a lot of resources is simply because of anxiety uh, and fear of failure uh, and then also what you have might not be working for you. So if you're studying with something and you feel like, oh, I think I need something else. Or I think I need something more. Um, depending on your circumstances, you might need to let that go. All right. That might just be an indication. Either you need to buckle down and stick with that or make a decision and find a resource that actually works for you. Um, I want to show you really quickly uh, some of our uh, uh, recent Remar nurses that have passed NCLEX um, and and it says we showed it, we shared a graphic today. It says you only fail when you stop trying. You only fail when you stop trying. Uh, and I want to show you guys these uh, these individuals. Everybody on that screen. These six nurses have passed NCLEX with Remar Review. They did a video testimonial, yeah. uh, and they're actually all repeat test takers. Now I can tell you that uh, somebody on that screen, somebody on the screen, I'm gonna make you go big again, has taken NCLEX ten times. And, and have their license. And they have their license now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It took NCLEX 10 times and they have their license. 
Uh, two people on the screen, I can tell you, actually three people are from outside of the United States meaning they didn't go to, to school in the U.S. English is not their uh, their second or uh, is not their first or primary language, but they've passed NCLEX. All right. Uh, so if you've taken NCLEX less than 10 times, yeah. um, <laughs> if, if English is your first language, uh, you should be encouraged uh, because there are other individuals uh, that are succeeding uh, and they've come to uh, to find what works for them. Uh, and we believe that's Remar Review and we believe it'll work for you as well. Uh, so you you only fail, guys. Remember this. You only fail when you stop what? When you stop trying. And that's why we say, you know, I can, I will, yeah. and I must pass NCLEX. Me. All right. You only me. fail when you stop trying. All right. So here's the words of encouragement. Uh, here's what uh, I've personally been waiting for. Uh, this has encouraged me. Uh, and, and the words of encouragement is simply this. Uh, yield not to temptation. Yield not to temptation. Now, uh, the reason I say yield not to temptation uh, and because the word temptation actually means, it's a simple word, it means test. Mm -hmm. The word temptation means test. And right now, all of you guys are in a position of testing or a position of temptation. Um, and, and so when temptations come, they often come, uh, they're, the, they're designed to determine our strengths and our weaknesses. Uh, but we only really recognize them as temptations uh, when we are in the point of weakness. Oh, all right. Temptations yeah. usually present themselves to us when we're at a point of weakness. Um, I think about uh, I think it's Luke chapter four uh, when Christ is actually he just comes out of the wilderness. He's, he goes into the wilderness to be tested. Right. And after the 40 days of fasting uh, and then Satan comes and here's this this test or temptation after 40 days of fasting or being in a weakened position. Now, here's the here's the thing. When you're in a weak position, uh, sometimes you allow yourself, we allow ourselves to feel that the position that we're in now is the position that we're going to be in for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. we can't see past the moment. Yeah. We can't see past the test. Uh, and that happens with uh, financial, uh, with our financial positions. Mm -hmm. uh, it happens with relationships uh, and certainly happens with NCLEX and with testing. It happens with spirituality. We feel that the position that we're in right now, even though it might be a low position or not the ideal position, is exactly where we're going to be, especially after repeated failure. OK, um, but what I have to tell you is that if you yield not to temptation, in other words, don't give in, uh, you, you will be able to pass the test. Here's something that my mother actually um, encouraged me with uh, when I was a young boy, like all the time, she would tell me this. OK, remember that temptation comes along and, and you're tempted to think that where you are now is where you're always going to be. So let's say I was riding my bike one day. I fell off, scraped my knee up like really bad, like boys do. Right. So I go home and I'm crying. I'm like, Mom, this is messed up. Ah, you know, I'm crying. And she looks at me and she says this every time. So I would remember it. She says it'll be better before you're married. Like it'll be better before you're married. Well, when is that? I don't know, but it's going to be better in the future uh, or, or it'll be better before you're older. And what she was doing is simply taking my mind off of the present, like off of the now, off of the pain, off of the off of the injury and saying that if you look to the future and see that this is actually going to heal, like you're, what you're experiencing now is not going to be what you experienced then. Wow. Yeah. And that moment right there allows me to dry my eyes, stop crying and just look at it like, oh, OK, now I'm looking at uh, at an injury or a wound, but this thing is going to heal. Yeah. And, and you know, true. praise God for moms. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just for that wisdom is because if we can look past the temptation, if we can look past this test, if we can look past NCLEX. We'll see that that the things that we're allowing to hold us down won't even won't even matter, won't even be significant uh, yeah. into the future. Yeah. Um, there was somebody on the uh, either, either the chat or the Facebook messages from earlier today. Yeah. Um, they messaged they messaged uh, Regina back in February and said, hey, I'm testing in uh, in March and I'm not sure what I what I need to get. And Regina recommended, you know, hey, get the DVD self-study program. It'll help you go over the content. It'll help you to, you know, um, focus your studies and uh, and get to where you need to be. And and the student, she essentially said, well, you know what? I'm at a place right now in life that I, I just can't afford to um, to get this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to, but it's, you know, it's 200 something and I just can't afford it. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and test and, and see what I can do. Well, she messaged um, today. She tested and unfortunately she failed. Um, but she messaged today and says, well, you know, I just tested again. 
this uh, I've taken it several times um, and I felt what what do I need to do? And so the recommendation was the same recommendation as it was in February. Well, this is really what you need to get in order to be successful um, with the test, even if it takes a little bit longer um, or you have to, you know, change something around. This this will really help you. And we believe that it will. And we waited for her reply and her reply was simple. It was, well, um, I'm going to see what I can do to make it happen. Right. And and that was that was it. That was that moment. Like, okay, I've tried it. I've tried to do, you know, the uh, with without. Um, But when you realize what you need, you go ahead and do what you got to do. Now, here's the other side. So I'm working on a sermon, actually, for Saturday. Um, I've been asked to speak at one of our sister churches. uh, And the sermon title is simply the other side of temptation, the other side of temptation. In other words, when you're in temptation, you think that where you are right now is where you're always going to be. But the on the other side of temptation is that success, is that victory, uh, is that help. Uh, it's not in the words. So where you are now isn't where you need to train your focus on. It's not where you need to train your mind on. So in other words, on the other side of this NCLEX temptation uh, is, a, is a paycheck. Oh, yeah. So she's saying, I can't afford oh, yeah. I can't afford it right now. Um, and that's understandable. But if you look towards the other side and see, oh, okay, when I finish as the LP and I'm going to make 45 or as I finish as the RP and I'm going to make 55 or RM, excuse me, I'm going to make 55 or 60. When you can see that, then it just changes everything as far as priorities. And then the same thing at the spiritual level uh, is that where you are now isn't always where you have to be. Okay, Uh, it's not always where you have to be. You have to be able to see a better vision of yourself, a better future of yourself. Uh, In other words, some people will say, um, you have to think of yourself and see yourself as God sees you, right? You have to think of yourself as God sees you. And when you put it into that framework, uh, you are more than conquerors. Um, you are uh, seated at the right hand uh, uh, of glory. Um, you've already become victorious by the one who is victorious. I mean, like the, the idea higher are the, than the heavens are God's idea for you. Okay, higher than the highest thought of man is how God looks at you. Uh, In fact, I'll say it like this. um, God looked into the future and assessed a a value to you and you are worth the blood of a God. You are worth the blood of God. All right. So there's nothing um, that is outside of your reach, um, but you have to be able to see past this moment of temptation, work through the challenge. Do not give up. Do not give in. All right. Um, we're going to pray. We're going to pray because we want to make sure that we encourage each and every one of you uh, to not yield to temptation. Do not give in to thinking that where you are now is where you will always be. And if you work through these challenges, I promise you there is uh, so much better on Absolutely. the other side. Absolutely. There's so much better on the other side. Absolutely. We want you to see that for yourself. Yeah. All right. We want you to see that. So, guys, let's pray. Yeah. You guys ready to pray? We're going to pray. I know some of you guys are, uh, some of us are testing soon. Uh, some of you yes. are testing very soon. Um, and so we want to go ahead and uh, be mindful of that. We want to pray for that. We want Martine. Martine. Yeah, I think I've seen. Okay. Uh, ask for prayer on here. So. Absolutely. Several yes. of you asked for prayer. We're going to definitely pray um, <laughs> that you yield not to temptation. Absolutely. All right. You guys ready? Let's do this. Let's pray. Ah, here we go. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right. Yeah. So when you realize that um, that it's his kingdom, it's his power, it's his glory, that takes a lot of stress off uh, when we put okay. things in God's hands. Yes. Okay. Um, we're praying for each and every one of you. All the time. Um, every morning we actually we wake up and, and we thank God for the nurses that have passed NCLEX with Remar mm-hmm. and pray for the ones, uh, pray for you all that are testing soon um, because we want to make sure that um, that you are successful, uh, most of all, so that you can have a testimony to give glory, uh, glory to him. 
um, I just want to, I know we pray, but I just want to share a testimony that, oh, yeah. um, that we had uh, last week on Sunday. We got an email from a student who was testing that very next day. She was testing that very next day and she uh, emailed and said she, her sister passed away that day. Her sister passed away that day. And so um, her sister was in California and passed away. And she, the student, could not change her test date. It was uh, underneath the 24 hours and she couldn't change it. So she was planning to test that Monday. Uh, but she asked for prayer because her sister had passed and she was very distraught about it. So uh, Mark and I pray. We had our staff pray and um, we heard back from her that she actually had passed her uh, exam, her NCLEX RN yeah, exam. So yeah. it's just amazing um, the power of prayer and also um, getting to a point where you realize that um, that all things work for the good. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, listen, I'm going to say this. Uh, this wasn't planned, um, but there's 300 and some uh, people watching. Uh, if you're dealing with uh, with testing anxiety or uh, or failure or the fear of failure, um, you really want to um, get what works for passing NCLEX. We specialize in helping repeat test takers. Absolutely. Um, and so there's actually um, let me see. Let me see if I can put this on the screen real quick. Uh, all right. There we go. All right. If you uh, if you're looking for help and you want to get the DVD self study program, uh, type in that word right there. Retest uh, at checkout for twenty five dollars off, uh, and that'll be a help for you. So you can have you know kind of peace of mind that you have something that's going to work uh, and something that's going to benefit you. Um, you know, it's it's just twenty five dollars, but what it does is to help encourage you, let you know that hey, we're here with you. Uh, we want to help you work through this moment uh, so that you can come back. Uh, and be a testimonial and, and share uh, what God has done for you uh, and that you've been able to, that you didn't stay where you were, but that you were able to move uh, into your career, uh, into that next phase of life and do exactly what you've been called to do. Yep. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this live uh, review. And I hope that it helped you guys. I will see you guys on Monday. I'm going to go over for NCLEX RN, the 2019 changes, uh, some things that they released early. And I will be so happy to share that with you guys on Monday. On Monday. All uh, right. See you guys later. Bye-bye, guys. God bless.